my name is Hayden Chow, and I'm going to be your host for today's episode, Sound and Story. How many of you have sat in the theater and cried over a movie? How many of you have taken walks with your earphones on, blasting your favorite song, and pretending you're in a music video? I think we're all guilty as charged. Film and music has always been a form of art and expression. It evokes emotion and allows us to immerse into an entirely different world. But have you ever wondered how they managed to paint such a realistic picture? The answer is sound. Oftentimes we focus too much on the visuals and forget that sound plays a major part in film and art in general. In this podcast, I hope to convince you that sound is the most important element in storytelling. I will be dividing this podcast into two parts, where I talk about sound in the music industry, followed by sound in the film industry. First, I would like to introduce you to something called word painting, a technique in music composition where music reflects the literal meaning of a song's lyrics or story elements. There is a very broad range of examples, but let me start with a simple one. The music cutting out after the word stop. You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. Stop. Hammer time. Go with the phone. It is and Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. Believe me, just hey, hey, hey. Oh. Stop. Wait a minute. The pause in music adds dramatic effect, emphasizing the meaning of the word stop and making it more impactful. There are also times when sound is added to the song instead of paused to contribute to the literal meaning of it, including the sound of a clock in the famous nursery rhyme. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse went up the clock, the clock struck one. The mouse went down Hickory dickory dock Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock And the song Backdoor by Stray Kids which literally has the sound of knocking and a door creaking open These are very surface level examples of word painting But sometimes these decisions in music production extends to a deeper meaning of the song. I would like to use one of my favorites as an example. Lie by Jimin of BTS. First, let me talk about the meaning of the song, Lie. Since the majority of us don't speak Korean, let me read off a snippet of the English translations for the lyrics. Find the me when I was pure. I can't be free from this lie. Give me back my smile. This entire song is about his tendency to beat himself up for his mistakes, telling himself lies such as I am not good enough, and withering in self-hate. Now, the word painting in this song is very hidden, but I'm about to reveal it to you. Most songs only stay within one type of chord, major or minor. However, this song has both. A majority of the song is in major chord. Major chords are often associated with happiness and content. However, when Jimin sings this part, it switches to minor chord, which is often associated with unease or discomfort. Note that when he switches to minor chord, he says caught in a lie. This is word painting because that one minor chord within a bunch of major chords symbolizes a repent or acceptance. The line represents the realization that his happiness is fake and that the rest of the song is a lie in itself. This goes to show that the meaning of the song can be found not only in the lyrics but also in the sound. According to an article by the songwriting desk. Word painting is a fantastic songwriting concept that adds depth and sophistication to your music, as well as being extremely effective when trying to drive home a point. It can also be wonderfully satisfying to an attentive listener. Now let's move on to sound in film production. 
Dialogue and the exaggerated sound effects, like, are the most obvious forms of sound in movies, but we often forget aspects like background music or just background sound and how important they are. The Los Angeles Film School wrote an article arguing that the way to make a film more believable using sound is to incorporate what are known as his synchronous sound effects, often in the form of background sounds. These sounds do not directly correlate to the action occurring in the scene, but they can bring a film to life. Including sounds typical of a city or rural area can help to make the film setting more realistic. Take Parasite as an example. Parasite is a black comedy thriller film, which tells the story of two families, one poor and one rich. Let's listen to the sounds played during the scenes happening at the rich family's house. Now listen to the sound created for the poor family's home. <laughs> the sound supervisor of this movie, Ralph Taeyang Choi, made the sound of the semi underground house of the poor family with a lot of interference from outside noise flowing into the interior. It was designed with a number of ambient sounds, including the sound of cars passing by by the alley, neighborhood people, street vendors, piano practice, and barking dogs. While in the case of the rich house, the living room and kitchen were designed with a quiet, peaceful bird sound and a quiet room tone. There's minimal interference from outside. The stark difference between these sounds highlights the contrast between their living conditions, which is important if you want to tell a story from the struggle of social classes. Other than creating an appropriate atmosphere, sound also has the ability to evoke emotions like stress and build tension. My old film instructor loved using the movie Jaws as an example. Jaws is an American thriller film about hunting down a murderous shark. And here is the famous Jaws theme that is played throughout the film. We hear the crescendo, the fast build up, and just when we think it's about to get to the climax, it stops. This leaves a feeling of incompletion and uncertainty within the audience. We thought it was going to go a certain way, but it changes paths and makes us fear the unknown. The shark doesn't even show up for the first half of the movie, but our brains learn to associate the sound with the shark, and therefore whenever that theme plays, it builds tension. This applies to a lot of other horror-themed movies. To create strange, uneasy feelings, sounds need to be unnatural. We always experience new feelings of anxiety and tension in our lives when we encounter sounds that are unfamiliar to us, separate from the sounds of our unconscious lives. Horror films require a lot of imagination from the audience, it's all about dropping hints and letting them make the connections. I understand those who would argue that visuals are the most important element in film. However, sound helps us understand events that are happening off screen. An article from Video Maker explains it this way. Imagine two characters walk into a dark room out of frame. Then there is the sound of a blade being drawn followed by stabbing sounds and screaming. The audience understands what is happening despite not seeing the action on screen. This also allows audience members to interpret the scene individually and experience it in a unique way. Um, my brother is playing the piano right outside my room right now and I can't get him to shut up to record this. But this is a great example that you can't see him, but you can hear him, and therefore you as an audience knows what's happening in the background without the visuals. 
And this concludes my research on sound in film and music and how it manipulates our emotions, sets the tone, and tells a story. Maybe after listening to this podcast, you'll start noticing these techniques next time you watch a movie or listen to a song. What do you think is the most important aspect of storytelling? Thank you for listening.